So good morning and welcome back to Thought for the Day. Uh, we're continuing to look at the life of David and this morning we're thinking about uh, David and his uh, meeting with Abigail. So uh, before we get to that, let's pray. Let's pray. Loving Father, as we come to you this morning, we pray that you would be pleased to speak into our lives. So as we uh, consider your word, we might recognize just how much we need your grace and help in these days. So we pray, Lord, grant it to us for Jesus' sake. Amen. So let me read to you then from 1 Samuel 25 and verses uh, 32 through to um, 34. David said to Abigail, Praise and be to the Lord, the God of Israel, who has sent you today to meet me. May you be blessed for your good judgment and for keeping me from bloodshed this day and from avenging myself with my own hands. Otherwise, as surely as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, who has kept me from harming you, if you had not come quickly to meet me, not one male belonging to Nabal would have been left alive by daybreak. So at times then in our lives we have to deal with horrible characters. Um, that's someone who treats you with contempt or uh, makes a mockery of the things that you have done, uh, maybe in your home life or your work life or at school maybe. Um, well David in this passage faces just such a character. Uh, he's a pretty horrible guy. Even his wife who at one point agreed to marry him uh, can't find any redeeming features in him. Now maybe she was, maybe it was an arranged marriage and she didn't know what she was getting, but uh, yeah, that's a sad indictment, isn't it? If your wife can, can't even find anything um, nice about you. Now his servants think that he's a loser and a bully, uh, and worse, that he's going to get them killed. So um, Nabal, who is the man that we're talking about in this chapter, really is, as he is described in the passage, a fool. He's a, a man who doesn't understand God, and has no concern for the things of God, has no concern um, in his life for what God is doing. He's just out to have fun and to live at large as he would see it. Now, when we meet such people um, in our lives, we have choices to make, don't we? We have choice with how to deal with them. Um, very often, those kind of folk make our blood boil. They make us get um, cross and angry, uh, and we want to treat them with as much contempt as they've treated us. Or, or even worse. Well, David here allows Nabal to get under his skin. He is mad. He's he's upset at the slight that Nabal um, has shown to him. And now it's at this point in the passage that we discover that this passage is about David and not about Abigail or Nabal. It's actually about David and how he will respond in this particular situation. Well, he gets his men. He's out for revenge. As far as he's concerned, he's going to deal with this slight. He's going to deal with this upstart. Um, so he uh, gets his sword, arms his men, 400 of them, and off they go to sort out this problem. Well, it's here that we see God's grace uh, and his divine intervention. As, as David is charging along, heading to deal the death blow, really, to Nabal, um, uh, what happens is that one of the servants goes and tells Abigail, um, Nabal's wife, that uh, David's men have called and um, that they were treated badly and that Nabal was going to get them killed. And so Abigail does what she needs to do. She collects up all the stuff that he, that David should have received as kind of a tribute. Um, and so she gathers that all up, gets that, and heads off herself to, to, to deal with David as he comes, um, as he comes along to, to, to deal, as he sees it, his justice. Now, uh, when she meets David, she treats him with the respect that he deserves. So she uh, falls on her uh, knees, she bows before him, she um, acknowledges what Nabal has done, she um, asks that David will be merciful and um, she really just makes sure that um, David is listening to her. And when David is listening to her, she then begins to suggest that David may not be walking in God's ways himself. Now, that takes a brave woman. Um, clearly, she's got some some common sense about her. She certainly, uh, as evident by what she says, she certainly loves the Lord. Uh, and knows that the Lord has plans for David. And so he, she tells him that he is acting in a way that will have consequences that he will need to deal with. Um, and so David listens to her, and actually he praises the Lord. He acknowledges that Abigail has come um, at the instigation of God. Uh, if she had been later or, or hadn't come at all, then everyone in Nabal's household every male anyway within Nabal's household would have died but the reality is um, 
Abigail stops him in his tracks and, and so he sees that this is the Lord at work. He recognises that the Lord has saved him in this particular instance and used Abigail to do it. So he's very thankful to the Lord and to Abigail for that. So he takes his stuff and he goes. Um, well, in the interim, uh, Abigail goes back and talks to Nabal, tells Nabal just how, how close he's come to death. Uh, and then we see the justice of God. You see, if David had left this in God's hand and hadn't taken Humbridge himself and, and, and gone out to seek revenge, then, then the Lord would have dealt with it. In fact, he does deal with it. Uh, Nabal, um, under God's hand, is judged and uh, he dies. While well, having died, uh, David remembers Abigail, um, hard to forget her, beautiful woman on the, on the track who'd, who'd done so much for him. Um, and he then seeks to take Abigail as his wife. Now he sees that she would make a good queen and, and I've no doubt that she did make a good queen. Uh, he sees that, he sees the character of her, he sees uh, that this is somebody to be sought after and, and that's not the issue. The issue is that David is already married, he's already got a wife and not only do we read that David takes Abigail as his wife but we also re uh, read that he takes uh, another um, as his wife at exactly the same time. Well herein lies the problem. Uh, you see our bigger issue, biggest issues are not the things that come from outside, it's not the neighbours of this life, it's not the um, uh, the challenges on who we are from the outside. The biggest issue that God has to deal with in our lives is us. Uh, you see our problem is that we are headstrong and we want to do what we want to do. Well here we get a glimpse to see what David's real problem is going to be, how he is going to fall in his later life. He loves women, he loves um, women in such a way as that he's you know he collects wives um, and more than that he has an eye for the ladies and so we see that that this is becoming a problem this is David's Achilles heel and so what we need to recognize is that in our lives just as in David's life there are times when God will stop us doing something pretty reckless um, but there are other times when we simply with our eyes open do pretty reckless things anyway and so we really need the grace of God in our lives don't we uh, David uh, knew, needed the grace of God in his life uh, and he needed to trust the Lord more even with the decisions that he seems to make impromptu without consulting God um, he needs to be one who stops and takes takes care, uh, takes um, a few moments to think it through and to pray it through and so we need to be like that too we need to be trusting God in the midst of our situations trusting him with slights against us but more than that trusting God with our own internal struggles with the things that we find um, hard to resist it may not be women in your case it may be some other particular thing that you find it hard to avoid or hard to stop doing once you've recognized that that's an issue in your life the time is then to start praying and asking that the Lord will help you with that particular uh, that, that particular issue you see God's biggest problem in our life is not others it's ourselves and so we need to surrender ourselves to the Lord um, sadly David failed to do that in this passage in this particular instance of, of uh, taking on extra wives um, but uh, God in his grace still looks after David and continues to help him um, but it does lead to bigger problems later on so if you recognize there's something in your life that needs sorting out today confess it to the Lord ask for his strength and uh, ask that he would change you uh, and help you uh, along the way let's pray Glorious Father, as we've looked at this passage, we recognise that David was a man who was controlled by passions, as we so often are. And we pray, Lord, that you would have a reign upon our passions. Lord, whether they're passions because we feel that we've been slighted, uh, whether they're passions because we love something so much. Um, Lord, we pray that you would just help us to be wise and to trust you with our lives. And we ask it for Jesus' sake. Amen. <laughs>